Just one week prior to the fight, Mike Gibbons, with his brother Tom following, climb up a long flight of stairs to the top of a building in Manhattan where Mike actually did a great deal of his training in preparation for his fight with Packy McFarland. Mike is seen using the pulleys as his brother Tom keeps stress on the elastic by holding it taut. Gibbons does a great deal of shadow boxing, shooting out the left jab and following it with a straight right, then coming in with a left hook. These are the combinations he hopes will be successful when he meets Packy McFarland. With Tom Gibbons to your right, skipping rope, Mike's in the background, continuing to shadow box and practice the moves and feints that he'll be using just seven days from now. Mike is training harder for this fight than any contest he's ever been in. As we go to the fight one week later, McFarland, in bathrobe, walks over to shake hands with Gibbons. Photographers ask the two men to pose in the center of the ring. There's Mike Gibbons in white trunks with his brother Tom standing behind him. Packy McFarland is to your left. As we go into round one, it's McFarland in black trunks charging into Gibbons. Both of these men have excellent left jabs. McFarland has to be wary of the strong uppercuts thrown on the inside, which Gibbons is noted for. In 1915, there was no decision rendered if both men were standing on their feet at the end of the fight. The only way to win was by a knockout. And if a KO wasn't scored, the fight went into the record book as a no decision contest, with neither fighter suffering a defeat, regardless of what type of a beating he might have absorbed during the contest. Frequently, however, the newspaper reporters at ringside gave their verdict the following day in their columns. Round one is scored evenly as both men scored effectively with their left hands and boxed cleverly. Mike Gibbons took a slight edge in round two, scoring some solid rights to the body on the inside. But McFarland came back to win round three, boxing magnificently and scoring time and again with his left jab. Watch Gibbons get in with a good left-right-left -left combination and hurt McFarland. McFarland will hold on. four is given to Gibbons as the result of those hard punches scored in the early part of the round. In 1915, it was the custom of the time for the seconds to fan their fighter during the rest period. We are watching as Gibbons gets instructions from his cornerman. McFarland turned professional in 1904 and going into tonight's contest has had 102 professional fights. McFarlane enjoys the unique distinction of never having been beaten. Gibbons gets in some hard punches here in round five. Those body blows are bound to slow up McFarlane later on in the fight. Watch Gibbons get in with that jolting uppercut. That's the punch he's noted for. McFarland will miss with a wild right, and Gibbons comes back punching. Here at the end of round four, it's still a very close fight. Rounds five and six were scored evenly by the newspaper men at ringside. The general feeling was that the two men were actually neutralizing one another with the magnificent boxing performance that each was putting on. Gibbons will shoot in some blistering punches that hurt McFarland. Here in round seven, the pattern of the fight continues with Gibbons jabbing, using those strong hooks on the inside, and McFarland cleverly boxing his man, looking for that one big opening. Two years ago, 
after fighting a no decision contest with Jack Britton, McFarlane retired undefeated after 102 fights. But with the unbeatable reputation that Mike Gibbons was building, there was an almost unanimous call among the people in boxing for a match between Gibbons and the retired Packy McFarlane. fighters are getting in hard body blows. This is truly a tremendous contest between two of the greatest welterweights of all time. McFarlane will half hit, half push Gibbons with a left hook, but Gibbons comes back with two lefts of his own. McFarlane's ego couldn't ignore the experts writing him off. It wasn't long before Packy stated that he was coming out of retirement to prove that he was still the best welterweight in the world. This turned out to be McFarlane's last fight as he never again entered the ring after this contest with Mike Gibbons. The majority of newspaper men gave round seven to McFarlane. Round eight was given to Gibbons as Mike scored effectively with his left jab and twice caught McFarlane on the inside with powerful short uppercuts. As we go into round nine of this magnificent exhibition, there's little to choose between these two masters of the art of boxing. Watch Gibbons faint and then both men exchange solid punches. Gibbons and McFarlane are using every clever trick in the book. And again, round nine is scored evenly, with both men demonstrating why they are considered two of the greatest fighters in the history of boxing. As we start the tenth and final round, everyone knows that they have been witnessing one of boxing's all-time great epics. Slipping punches, McFarlane feigning, both men throwing false leads, hoping for an opening, each taking advantage of the slightest error his opponent makes. This is truly a boxing classic. Gibbons has fought such great fighters as Jack Dillon, Harry Gribb, and Ted Kidd Lewis, all reputedly fistic marbles, but he's never coped with a man the equivalent of Packy McFarlane. gradually draws to the end of the 10th round, it's obvious there's going to be no knockout. But both of these men know that each has been in with a master fighter. Gibbons will step back smartly and McFarlane will miss a hard right. That's been the story of the fight each man taking turns in thwarting the cleverness of his opponent. The boxing fans are getting an unforgettable treat.
As round 10 ends, the two fighters first shake hands, but then McFarlane makes a menacing gesture towards Mike, as if he still hasn't had enough. Since there was no knockout, there was no decision rendered, but the following day, the 16 reporters at ringside called it a magnificent draw.